what what I would what I would do uh, initially. There's two ways you can go with TV. TV is an addiction. It's just like a, it is just like heroin or morphine or opium. They don't like to talk about this, but all of their statistics show that people are addicted to television and they show the same type of withdrawal symptoms when they stop watching television as they do with other addictive drugs. This has all been scientifically documented. It's not something that I'm making up. And there are many books, The Plug-In Drug by Denise Wynn, uh, or um, Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television, Amusing Ourselves to Death, um, a whole bunch. I've read a lot of books on television written by very brilliant uh, analysts of that medium. And so basically it is an addiction. Uh, if you are addicted to television, and I would say watching it every day is a sign of addiction because anything you do on a regular basis every day is a type of addiction. If you're watching it every day, then first of all, the, the first thing you have to do is look at what you're watching. Uh, that's the most important thing first as just a first step. You, most people will find that what they watch is rubbish. There are certain people that do watch like uh, the news, which I think is rubbish as well because it, it's just empty. I mean, there's a book called Watching TV News um, by Neil Postman. Very clearly articulates the fact, this guy is a PhD in communications theory at Columbia University, that you don't learn anything on the news. You, in fact, are, are, are actually dumbed down. People during the Gulf War crisis, there were statistical studies done. The people watching CNN knew less about the war than people that were reading uh, uh, articles about the war. So, and you can read an article in five minutes. It takes you a half an hour to watch a news program. About 90% of it is just what they call fluff. And then the 10% is, and the other thing, I don't think we should look, uh, and I'm very opposed to showing pictures of dead Muslims. Um, in the Battle of Uhud, when the, when the Prophet saw the Muslims that were dead, he commanded the Sahaba to cover them over. That we're not, we should not uh, denigrate our brothers and sisters that have died in the way of Allah by exposing their nakedness to the whole world to look at. And the fact that the kuffar do this is because they're just dogs over, uh, over carcasses. That's what they are. They're just dogs. Those photojournalists, they're like dogs over carcasses. They have no human compassion for the, the people and the victims that they're taking pictures of. And the Muslims should not, we should not become part of that. And I really would urge all of you to write magazines, Islamic magazines, and ask them to stop putting these pictures in our magazines. Because one, we become desensitized to the suffering that our brothers and sisters are um, experiencing all over the world. But two, they literally don't benefit you. What you end up doing is looking at it, feeling disgusted, and turning the next page. And that is, is something, it's despicable in itself. The fact that you can see that and then go have dinner is a sign that the heart's dead. I mean, if we really had living hearts and you see one of those pictures, uh, you'll vomit or, or just weep uh, bitter tears and probably wouldn't eat. Hassan al-Basri, somebody mentioned death to him and he didn't eat for three days. So really uh, think about that. Um, but, you know, the television is a, a serious disease. What, what I would uh, recommend this Ramadan is everybody who has a television, just unplug it during that month. Literally put it into a closet and don't watch it for an entire month. And just look at the change that takes place in your life, inside the house. It, was it positive or was it negative? That's what I would ask all of you to do. And what you need to do is really incur, uh, uh, encourage your children and instill in them a love of reading from an early age. Because if, they, if you use the television as a babysitter as them as children, they will become addicted to it at an early age. And television is hard to compete with. It really is. It's a type of neural stimulation um, that, that uh, books uh, tend to uh, have a difficult time competing with. And children that grow up watching television uh, end up not reading. And this has all also been documented. So I would encourage you to read the literature. There's a book called Kicking the TV Habit which is a very good book for parents, and it gives alternatives to um, doing these things. And one thing with the children is, you know, I would just encourage, like, family people, instead of getting together to watch a television program, is do something human, where you literally interact with each other and just enrich our lives a little bit. It's not just children that don't realize they're being manipulated. It's actually everybody. It's the adult population as well, because there's a lot of people that think that they can watch these things and they don't think that they're being affected by it. They actually believe somehow that they're immune to it. 
they, well, it's affecting all these other people, but I'm not affected by it, right? As he puts on his Ray-Ban glasses and, and ties his Nike shoes and, and gets into his Lexus car. I mean, all of those things, why does he have them? He, he didn't really choose them. They, they were actually implanted in his mind because he's buying on impulse. Most people, in fact, they call it impulse buying. They don't actually buy because they want something or, or they need something. They actually have been programmed to buy these things. Now, the average person in this country is seeing, according to studies that have been done on this, 3,000 commercials a day. This doesn't include television, this is talking billboards, a lot of this doesn't include like t-shirts, all these people going around with t-shirts. And I, I saw somebody today, a Muslim, he had this Calvin Klein thing. I said, is he paying you? Do you have a contract? He said, no. I said, well, you're getting robbed because you're giving him free advertising and you're not getting any money out of it. That's un-American. <laughs> but that's the thing. They, they don't... They, why is he wearing a t-shirt that says Calvin Klein on it, who's a pornographer basically? And then he's got a hat that says, I love Islam. <laughs> I mean, something's, you know, it's one of those what's wrong with this picture type things. 